to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'm good. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna turn over to the superintendent for a second. Just really quick before we get into the rest of the agenda, I just wanted to take a minute um, to recognize a couple guests who actually will be um, spending a lot of time with us this upcoming school year. And they're in the back. Uh, there are two school resource officers for the school year. Um, we have Officer Jonathan Smith and, and, and Officer Emily Rochelle. Um, Emily will, is the new SRO. She'll be stationed at ETMS. And Jonathan was with us last year and he'll be stationed again at the high school. Um, so we're really happy to have both of them on board for next school year. All right, at the call for motion to accept the consensus agenda as submitted. Any item to separate to discuss or to vote on separately? If not, all those in favor accepting the consensus agenda, please say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carries. Personnel items, I'll turn it over. Oh, I call for a motion to accept personnel report as submitted. Second. second. Right, I'll second it. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Um, I'll separate items three, five, six, seven, eleven, and twelve. Any other items? If not, a call for a vote for item all items except three, five, six, seven, eleven, and twelve. If you accept those other items, please say aye. 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 Opposed your abstaining. Those items carry. Turn it over to the superintendent. Thank you. Is this on here? Yeah, sounds great. Okay, um, tonight we uh, have some teachers who are uh, who are very excited to be bringing on board and. Um, you may hear a lot of things in the media about uh, the struggles that the school districts are having to find uh, teachers. And we've been very fortunate. We continue to find really high quality uh, applicants for our teaching positions. So we feel very fortunate. Um, and tonight I will be recommending um, a number of teachers, six of which are here tonight, uh, to be joining our team, okay? Um, so first, if you could come up here whenever I call you, uh, Kimberly Strasburg. Stand right next to me, Kimberly. Right. Kimberly will be joining us at Colonial Village as a reading teacher. Um, our principal, Ms. Bewitch, said, we're very excited to welcome Kim to our reading team at CV. After initially completing her practicum here years ago and supporting different NWCSD initiatives throughout the years, she will be an asset to our reading department and the students for years to come. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> All those in favor of accepting Kimberly uh, for a, a reading teacher at our Colonial Village Elementary School, please say aye. 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 Coach Abstaining, motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Next, Madison Town Townsend. Madison will be joining us at Eric Road this year in a grant funded math intervention teacher position. She was hired to be a K2 math uh, interventionist. Uh, Madison is an NW graduate and cheerleader. She currently coaches NW varsity cheerleading. She's also a graduate from Niagara University uh, where she earned her bachelor's in child education. She's currently work, working on her master's and then you as well. And Madison student taught at Eric Road last year in kindergarten and was really highly success, successful, so successful uh, that they wanna bring her back. So um, I present to you Madison Townsend. All those in favor accepting Madison Townsend as a uh, elementary math intervention teacher for Eric Grove, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Opposed or staying? Motion carries. Congratulations. Thank you. Next, Kelsey Lukowski. Kelsey will be joining us at Colonial Village in a grant funded special education teacher position. Kelsey is a former NWCSD student. Um, and recently completed her student teaching at CV and Eric Road. Just doesn't want to leave when we're keeping her. Uh, 
her, her colleagues and the principal there described her as flexible, supportive, and hardworking. Um, we're really looking forward to use, utilizing her strengths in this grant fund and special education teacher position this year. All those in favor accepting uh, Kelsey as a uh, 1.0 FCE special ed teacher at Colonial Village, please say aye. 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 What's your name? What's your face? Greg Hayes. Welcome, Gunners. Catherine will be joining us at Colonial Village for the grant funded math specialist position. Um, she comes to us with varied experiences that will certainly benefit all of our students for this grant funded position. Her experience in, in math was certainly a strength that we uh, that they picked up on during the interviews. Uh, her enthusiasm and energy were also two things that were really pointed out by the interview committee and they think it'll serve the school community very well. Catherine. All those in favor of accepting Catherine as a math specialist for Colonial Village Elementary School, please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Hold your standing. Congratulations. Jenna Wagner. Jenna will be joining Eric Road Special Education Department. Um, she was hired as our district wide K2 511 teacher, uh, which is housed at Eric Road. This is a brand new position. Uh, as we continue to expand our special education continuum for students, something that we've talked about here, bringing more of our students back, keeping our students here, and having uh, varied opportunities for our students in special education. Uh, Jenna is an NW graduate and has been a swim team announcer and scorekeeper for Niagara Wakefield High School since 2017. She is also a graduate from Niagara University, where she earned her bachelor's in elementary education and special education. Currently working on your master's there as well. Uh, she will be participating in the Orton Gillingham Academy at the associate level, where she will learn the structure of the English language more in depth and practice uh, multi sensory multi sensory techniques for teaching reading, spelling, and handwriting. Jenna Wagner. All those in favor of accepting Jenna as a 1.0 FTE uh, special ed teacher at Eric Road, please say aye. Aye. What's your name? Motion carries. Congratulations. Shannon Shield. Shannon will be joining us at West Street in a grant funded reading interventionist teacher position. Uh, Shannon spent last year working in Erie One BOCES in the E Academy. Um, she has a wide variety of teaching experiences, including third grade at St. Peter's, has actually done some home school, uh, home instruction teaching for students, uh, as well as some uh, per diem subbing. She'll be uh, working with students who. Um, who needs some recovery due to the pandemic with, re with reading. So we're very excited to be having, to having Shannon join us at West Street. All those in favor accepting Shannon as our reading intervention teacher at West Street Elementary, please say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Close proceeding, motion carries. Congratulations. We're going to take a couple minute break right now, just as we did the other night. So you just let this, as board members go and introduce yourselves to our new hires and say hi. Well, we'll reconvene at clock is back there, right? twenty after, so five minutes.
You know, that's like one of the worst places though to get to on the outer banks not because if go, not if you go to the bathroom. It's one oh did he go is he, so he's so he's on duck closer to the bridge. Not where you go past it's fish. actually gotten better. Yeah. Well, there's one, there's a one stretch that's better. only one row. Oh, I know. And yeah, if you, you if you, you hit the way. and if you're stuck behind a garbage truck, oh, I know. it is like five I'm hours of like your life gone. But you can go exactly by the elementary school and it cuts off like the whole like turn mm. um where it splits north and south. Well, we were in we were in Corilla. Yeah, we haven't got it. So we don't have it. Bob, is there anything for capital project right now? Uh, no, we have no change in the capital project. We haven't really shown our meeting yet, but we have some information on it. Okay. Um, ex officio student members reports. Excellent. Um, anything else? Okay. I'm going to bump back because I did get a communication to the board other than our fundraising information there. There's an email that I'd like to read to all of you. I got this this morning. And it says, uh, Dear Mr. Sabo, my name is John Lederhaus, uh, 1970 NWHS graduate, eldest son of Edward Town Jr.'s high princip uh, principal, late 1960s to 80s, Lee Lederhaus, and a 46 year resident of uh, Wheaton, Illinois. I want to commend your superintendent of the school, Dan Lonitz, who took several hours of his own time on Saturday, July 30th, to lead a tour of the updated NWHS for our 1970s uh, class reunion. We were so impressed with the excellent new portion of the school facilities and the encouraging stories of current NW projects and academic successes he shared with us. Again, I'm so impressed that your superintendent is so interested in our school that he personally led this tour. Sincerely yours, John Lederhaus, class of 70. Very nice. That was a lot of fun for me. So. Interesting, you know, we, we initially we thought there was going to be in the low twenties. There was, I think, over forty people there. Okay, that it was it was really great. Yeah, yeah. it was really, really really nice. Yeah, fun. All right, uh, just for my piece, uh, if you haven't gotten Maureen's your information about going to the conference yet, please do. What do we have right now going? Who else? What else do you need to know? I'm doing pre-law, yes. Are you going for that? I'm doing pre-law, yes. Yeah. Yeah, fine. I'll go. And then the thing is, if you guys don't want to stay there and you just want to commute, I don't have a problem with that because we all want to go together. Yeah, there's a lot. So, a few days. I mean, that's not a problem. It's just the morning drive is like two hours. Probably a little bit more. Like two and a half. Well, well, I'm just saying it's an option that we, if people want to come back. So, um, yes, it is. So, we'll let you know. Like, by, just let me know by the end of this week if you want to commute or if you're going to stay, and then we'll I'll I'll get in touch with you. I'll actually like email you back instead of like saying I already told you so. Um. All right, superintendent's report. Uh, as you can see tonight, uh, hiring continues um, and really in, in all of our departments at the next board meeting, we'll have some additional people uh, that will be onboarding as well. Um, I, I, I said at last meeting, the uh, HR business office staff members have just been incredibly busy. They've done an excellent job, uh, as have the building levels uh, with, with all the hiring that they've had to do. Um, I think the total number of new teachers at new teacher orientation this year is 31. Um, it's a significant number. Um, we obviously had a significant number of retirements, but we also had, you know, some people who worked with us for one year under the grant funded positions who, who moved on to probationary positions in other districts. So we've been backfilling those. So it's a you know, pretty large number, but um, it's, it's really exciting. So I've been, been very busy in that area. We, as you know, put out uh, requests for proposals for school security. Um, we ended up with two companies um, who demonstrated interest. So I wanna thank both those companies for their interest. Uh, a little bit later in the meeting, um, uh, I've asked for some action on uh, those companies and the RFPs. We had uh, the Western New York Law Conference. Uh, was August 3rd and there were some great topics there. We had 
nine um, staff uh, administrators from our district who took part in that block conference. Certainly some very relevant information and, and some current pressing issues. So it was really good that we had a team of, of administrators who attended. First time they've done it in person in a couple of years. So it was, it was really good. Athletics begins this upcoming week. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of captain's practices and that sort of thing going on, um, but it'll get really busy here next week. So the new teacher orientation that I mentioned earlier is scheduled for next week, August 25th and August 26th. Our opening day for all staff, it's right around the corner. It's August 30th, that's a Tuesday. We have three days of professional development, um, the Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. So the 30th of the August, 31st of August and the 1st of September. Um, so we're looking, we're really looking forward to getting everybody back and, and getting started again. And um, last thing, I, with regard to food service, I just wanna make sure that families know that um, online on the, on the website, if they go under food service, they can um, find the application there for the free and reduced lunch applications. Again, this year, um, meals are not free at all of our buildings, only those ones that are considered title schools. So we're just encouraging families and we're gonna be doing this a number of different ways and it's already been done in, in some ways, but we're just encouraging families to go in and make sure that they fill out that free and reduced lunch application form if they feel like they may be in need. Okay. That's all I have. Any questions in the superintendent on the report? Just to reiterate one, something, something that you clarified last week, they will have the, the sports players after school, the snack line open. Perfect. And, and, just one, and just one thing to add there, um, still sorting out whether the after school is going to be in both buildings this year, because that is the initial plan that we'll have middle school students who are waiting in the middle school and we'll have a snack line there and we do the same thing at high school. Okay. Great question. I don't know the answer. So um, I, I think, I, know it's, it's I, I believe what we have left are some building based substitute positions. Um, but if not, they'll be on our next agenda. Bob. All right. Um, items for board discussion. Uh, Jason had asked me to bring up one item uh, going back to the policy committee appointees. Um, Jason had asked for reconsideration about being put onto the policy committee. And I said, like I said, I, I made my appointment, but I'm going to let it come back before the entire board. And in the meeting that Jason, John, and I had with, uh, with Dan, um, he said that we have a discussion here and allow the board to weigh in on that piece. So um, I like to uh, open that up for discussion right now uh, in consideration of uh, changing appointments around. Anyone want to start to? Discussion with that. I think my position really hasn't changed at all. I think we all live and learn a little bit in life, and uh, sometimes we not make the best decisions, sometimes we don't. I was uncomfortable the way it was handled last time, and I'm not saying there's any other way to do it, but I, I am uncomfortable the way it was handled. And uh, if you would advise me, don't have a problem. Um, Bob's on a couple committees. Uh, I think maybe you should consider reappointing. Well, that's why I brought back before this. Yeah. I mean, so at this point, it's it's, yeah. it's the board's yeah. decision. Then at that point, so it's up to the you know the board to discuss and then to move on it, and so on. Uh, I think we talked we talked after our meeting, but uh, my my thing is. What happened? What what happened last last year? I can't. I, I can't. Don't want to see that happen again. With the misinformation that went out, and and people coming into this board thinking it's one thing, and it's that it's totally not true, and disrupting the whole board because of it, because of one person that set that in motion. And that person didn't even show up to that meeting. That's I have I have big issues with that. You're going to set something up, be present to do it. Well, I mean that's not an issue for. 
that's not a piece of being serving the committee or not that can happen with any member of the board at in the at, on the board itself. So I'm just I'm just I'm just saying. Um, on top of that, how many meetings? Three minutes. Uh, I just don't feel comfortable with it. So, uh, this side of the room. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I said it that uh, last time on the point to um, I'm very eager to serve on the policy committee. I enjoy it. Um, I think I do bring, yeah, you know, at times different viewpoints, which I think should be welcomed. And uh, anytime you can have more robust discussion of things, especially policies that are important, uh, it's important to do so. Appreciate you bringing it back on. So uh, I also had a meeting with Jason and our superintendent, and I feel that we uh, definitely kind of aired out how we were feeling on both sides. My concern with bringing you back to the committee is like, what's going to change? Like that, like, I don't have a problem with different opinions. I never have. I think that's what makes the board, you know, kind of operate. We can't all think like robots. It was the way that those opinions were put out to the other committee members and how they felt kind of walking out of those meetings. And, you know, obviously the attendance was an issue. We talked about that. That was kind of a special circumstance. And the other part is just the roadblock of not being able to like push things forward. So, you know, I think we kind of came up with a, a process for that, that, you know, we just put it to a vote. We're not going to sit there and spin our wheels. We put things to a vote, and that's you know how we'll whether it goes through or it doesn't. We revisit it, but um, you know I just I feel that I have a duty being the chair to kind of speak for the rest of the, the people. So I just need I, I don't know what's going to change. Like what would be different? Um, I don't, that that's kind of where I'm I'm struggling. I would never want to make somebody feel alienated because it kind of goes against everything we've been talking about that we are having a problem with. So I don't want to alienate somebody, but at the same time, I also don't want to offend or have people feel offended. That's well, the whole point of it is to have the inclusion piece and, and make sure everybody feels represented or whatever. So I'm struggling. Um, I don't even know, I guess if it came down to it, I would just have to make a, a split decision vote. Any comment? Okay. Well, I mean, the, the, the piece of it is, is that it's the board being able to determine then the makeup of that committee um, right now. And that's what we had, we had talked to Jason about that. I could bring it, I would bring it back before the board. Um, you know, I had made my determination based on, as I would with anyone who was a chair and had an issue with someone on the committee, I, I would go by the chair's recommendation on that. I wanna bring it back before the board and that's where I want you to determine that of whether or not it's, or, or who serves on there. Um, I, and I, when I say who serves on there, obviously reinstating Jason, that's what I mean, mean by that. Um, not obviously reconvening the entire committee. So at this point, I mean, if someone wants to, to make a motion to, to reinstate Jason on that committee, that is what it, you know, it would have to come down to at this point. And then we you know, have further discussion and have a vote on that. You know, my thing is this, you know, we, you look at us as a whole trying to work together and trying to accomplish whatever it is we're trying to accomplish on here. Um, you know, obviously every, agreeing with Julie, everyone has a different opinion. Rick and I, have, you know, obviously serving on here the longest, we've said this numerous times that we are not gonna always agree on everything as a board. You know, and as much as, you know, Nisba likes to come out and say, oh, you should all come out united and all be on the same page with everything. That's true in certain situations. Like, for example, when we hire the superintendent, or we, we have to, when we never hire another superintendent again while any of us are on the board, um, you, you want to be in front because you want to support that new candidate. But there's other issues that are going to come up that we are not always going to agree on. 
And, you know, obviously Rick and I, we've had disagreements in the past with things and, you know, we work it out and it, 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 uh, we move forward from that. So my, my piece is this, is I do not want a situation where it's going to be detrimental to how the board is one perceived in the public and number two, on how well we function as, as a whole. Um, you know, and that's what you have to weigh on and think about, you know, is any of these decisions is that either way, um, is it going to affect either of those two things? Because really, if, if you read your last um, uh, new on board, th there's a whole piece in there about, actually the past two had articles stating about that board dynamics and working together and, and being able to um, have those, they call it board harmony. And, you know, they say the successful boards are the ones that work together. They have that, that, that rapport with each other where they can, you know, they're able to, to have a, a, an open conversation about things. Um, and so that's why I want to, I'm going to leave it out there to all of you, you know, because I do not want to change around my structure of doing things when I do my point because I'm listening to my, one of my chairs. So that's why I wanted to bring it back to the board for you guys to decide. I was not in that, that part of the meeting. I was not at that. Was there? Do you want me to go? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, one of the things that we discussed. You know, there's a couple different ways that you know a, any committee can operate. Right. One is through a consensus, and and for, for a long time, that's how the the board in policy has 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 operated. Um, however, you know, it's also okay to have a lot of dis have discussion and let everybody have kind of their say on a particular policy and then put it to vote within the policy committee, right? So between the the three board members who serve on the policy and the three parents who are on the policy, those six people, you know, voting and then make a determination as to whether or not a policy would then move forward to the board. So um, I think that that is a, you know, certainly a, a way to do it that is very appropriate. <clears throat> I gotta step it up to do that. I don't know what your comfort level is with the new changes or the proposed changes, I should say. I sat in the meetings with you. There were some moments that were not good community wise, where some comments went out. We've lost a number of community because of some of these things. Uh, I don't want to see a repeat of any of that. Everyone is entitled to their opinion. Um, I'm, I'm really, I'm honest, I'm conflicted. I don't know, honestly. I mean, you can say things are going to change. Are they going to change? Not looking to silence you, Jason. I guess I think everyone is entitled to their opinion. Um, and I guess an opinion and having an agenda in some people's minds are kind of where I'm conflicted. And I guess if there's an agenda to block certain parts of policy, that I do have a problem with that. But to have a healthy discussion on it, yeah, I think we should. So I'm going to say. And I mean, the other part with this, and after the superintendent, I had talked about some of the you know, some of his suggestions were on there. You know, I mean, the other angle that you can take on there is if, if there's a controversial um, policy coming up, it's something that that committee can say, hey, you know what, we're not going to discuss it at the committee level. We can push it right to the board level for discussion on this item. And have that piece here instead of being discussed down there. Isn't that kind of defeats the whole point of having right. community members on our on our committee? Well, you could still sit. You can still have discussions about you know the, the formatting. I mean, all the the dynamics that go into a policy is is this you know is it there? I, I think one thing that we have to keep uh, you know keep light of when it comes to policies with the district 
And, and I know that this happens when I talk to other board presidents in the area is that they have board members who read what's going on in school boards that are like down in Florida and the South where they're, they're county-based school boards where they're making you know, $50,000, $60,000 of school board members in those situations. They are technically the ones who drive everything in the school, every decision made. And the superintendent is more or less enacts all the stuff that they decide on. New York State is differently. We have a, we hire a superintendent that has a vision for the district and comes up with ideas and say, hey, I want this policy in place because I think it's good for the district. And then we weigh in on, you know, whether or not that is a, is a good policy. And it might be that it's just a suggested policy. Not, it's something that's optional, but the superintendent feels it's important to be in, in, in place. And that's when we determine if we support the superintendent or don't support the superintendent in that in those decisions then. So that's a difference in those structures of the school boards that operate in other states versus New York State. So you look at, um, you know, I look at us as an example. We had, you know, a situation where there's a superintendent that we didn't agree on policies and we separated ways with there, but that was the superintendent, you know, still was able to make the determination of things and the board would disagree on that. We did not generate those ideas. It's still generated from the superintendent. And that's, it, and that's here. We've seen many things generate from the superintendent here that we either agree or we disagree on. And then we, and we talk about it. So I think that's the piece where, you know, we have to keep it, keep in mind with no matter who's on any of our committees, that what our role is, we are not paid members. We are trustees of the school. We pay a superintendent to generate ideas and, and enact an envision for the school that is structured around then um, how we, whether we agree or disagree with those aspects of it. Um, and you know, we luckily have a, as you heard from the, you know, one, of the, one of the members of our, our alumni, you know, a very strong and fantastic superintendent that's able to, that has a great vision so far for our school. I mean, you look at what's going on in our area right now, um, you know, we're one of the top school districts that people look to, to move to, to have their kids go to. So, and I, if I remember correctly, we have a very big influx of students, if I remember correct now, you know, coming in in, in certain grade levels because of that with people purchasing homes in the area. So. You don't think I have seen, we talked about bringing it back to the board. I mean, I don't, I don't wanna see where any of the committees are the residents that come out and work on these committees. Feel like, well, what's it not worth my problem to bother to come out because they're just gonna go over my head. And, and so I, I think it needs to be well, a committee based I, decision. And that's why we have the residents on there. But also remember, though, we can override any single thing that comes out of that committee piece there. Right. And we are one of the few, I want to say, I could probably count on my hand right now in the area that have community members serving on so many committees that we do. You know, one of our neighboring districts, they have a board meeting, the first meeting of the month. And the third meeting is the policy committee, which the entire board serves on. Yeah, and what I'm saying is they, that, that committee brings it to the board. Then you can, we can decide whether, what if, if and or whatever. But to say to the committee, we're going to send it to the board. I don't think that's the way to go. But I mean, what I'm saying, the same situation to apply. It, it, if they're sitting there and it's, it's a discussion like, oh my goodness, we can see this going in the wrong direction. This is a heated discussion already for this topic. You know, as uh, you know, the chair, Julie can simply say, or any other member on there, the superintendent can say, hey, you know what? Why don't we, this is not going anywhere here. This is not good discussion. Let's just push it to the board discussion there instead of having things tied up there i'm just providing uh, uh, you know alternative you know modes of operation that's you know you interpret what you know the school board association said as ideas for i can see the board like a split you know whether half and half don't pay but send it up because we don't really we're, we're we're kind of in the middle you know but if it's a decision that's been made by them they should bring it up and then we should decide if we want it or not but mm -hmm. I, I just tell them that to send it up not the way to go to me. I want the policy. I'm saying what's the policy? They decide on the policy. Oh, you don't think it should come up? For the I, no, they, it comes up for the board vote, right? Yeah. Well, it does. What I'm saying is during the committee, the, the residents come out and they voice their opinion. Their opinion then should come up to us, not say, well, let's say it's 90 10, right? That's what we, just the majority of them agree with it. 
then it should come up to the board and then we make our decision. Not to say because one person or whatever has decided that it's not right. Okay. Well, no, that's what he was saying, bringing it up to the. Well, then, can, can I just tell, yeah. can I clarify? Is that so, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, Bob, what you're saying is I think the, the, the if you're gonna vote, I think the natural way to do it would be to do that, right? So if you, if there's six members and you have a vote that's four two, or if you have a vote that's five one, or you know anything like that, I think that's that, that's pretty clear. I think the uh, scenario that Steve could be referring to is if you had a something that was two four, but was a item that was you know had a lot of there was a lot of differences of opinion on. At that point, if you wanted, you could then bring that here for discussion. I, I would and certainly the board to vote on something like that if they chose to, or they could express opinions, ideas, make recommendations, and even then throw it back to the to, to the um, policy committee. That's, I think, maybe the scenario. Well, not, that, the, not, the, not necessarily the scenario. If or if they decides. don't, or even if the committee decides not to do a vote, I mean, if it's if they're still trying to do consensus, they can't come to consensus. It's something I can just say, hey, you know what, Ben, all right, we can't come to consensus. So let's just move this up. Because what it, when those sure. come to us, that means that they, they have vetted it to be fitting every every criteria that needs to be for a policy. And it says to us, okay, this is ready. But there are policies out there that have in the past, uh, well before many of you have been on the school board, that policy committee says, you know what, this is we're putting this up to the school board because it's not something that we are going to be able to even touch, you know, or come out with any any common ground on or something. I can't remember what there were, there was a couple of things to deal with, uh, you know, after school activities and stuff sure. like that and, and whatnot. Um, and it came to us and we discussed it and we had a very, we had multiple meetings discussing those items where we asked for, you know, information okay. so that that's here. There. That's the dynamics of running right. the, the yep. committee. I, you know, our, our, the, the piece that's on here is reinstating a member back onto there. Um, and that's up to you as, as a board right now, because, um, as I said, I've, I'm where I said, where I did my job according to our policy, I appointed based on the, you know, the information that I got from the chair. And now um, it's up to you to reinstate him uh, to there if that's what the board so chooses. And again, it'd have to be a motion. And okay, just, you gotta make a decision. You gotta have a vote one way or another. Yeah. So I make a motion that we should- Well, I think Don wanted to say something first. Sorry to interrupt this, but he didn't think he saw it. Yeah, thank you. No, I mean, to Bob's point of bringing policy to the board, circumventing the policy committee is what I'm saying. We have a first reading and a second reading on these policies. If there's no discussion on them, what are we getting hung up on? I mean, we're bringing those policies for the first reading. We do that in a meeting, we bring it back as a second reading. And if there's no opinion from the audience or from board members, it, we're moving forward. But the point of not even getting to that point because we're still back in policy committee, where the hang up is and just varying opinions and whatever we can't come to a consensus. We've got to we've got to move stuff forward one way or another. And I agree that whether we all agree or not, but I think the final product that comes to the board should be for the first reading, second reading. I don't think it should be moving stuff that we can't decide in policy committee to the board and supporting your position, Bob. But it's not to say that a board member and I disagree with the first percent. Correct. Oh, right. No, not at all. No, no, no. Yeah. 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 Ye
easier for some things. I, I don't think that's that's worth more than a more more robust discussion. But yeah, you certainly have the mechanisms, and you know, thankfully we haven't really had to use the mechanisms to move things along. Uh, but there's, there, they are certainly there for you, that's for sure. Okay. So obviously, I'm very aware that this looks like we're singling you out, and I'm very uncomfortable and not okay with that. But going through the last year of sitting through those meetings, and actually more than a year, it was definitely more than a year, um, you know, and just kind of repeatedly have the entities uncomfortable, and not because of differing of opinions. These are like fundamental differences in like our ethics and, and the, the things that we believe in. And I mean, I, I don't, I've, I've said this before, like I feel like some of that can't really apply when we're in these seats. Like we, we're here to like kind of represent the, the community. And I know you do in your heart of hearts feel that you're representing a portion of the community, but in doing so, it comes across as canceling out other members of the community. So this is my opinion. I know, take it for its worth. And that's where I have the problem. Like we, our, our board, I, our policy committee is very diverse and, and lots of different opinions there. But it's like, even the people that kind of feel all over the place still are kind of feeling uncomfortable with the things that are being said in there by you. And that is where I'm struggling. I don't care that we have different opinions. I think that's great. That's, again, I'll, I'll say it again, that's what makes our board work. But when there's that offensive piece where people are walking away going, oh my God, wait, did I just hear what I think I heard? Like, is that what? But that's where I struggle. Like, we have to represent everybody. And I don't know what the right answer is. I, I, I would say yes to put you back on, but what happens when that happens again at the meeting in a month? What do we do? How do we how do we stop that? I would say you can move things to the vote to move things along. Uh, this I mean, is, I, this is besides yeah. moving it along. No, it's about it's about the dialogue that is happening right. between between people in there. And I think I'm being characterized as something that no, no, I'm, I'm not comfortable being characterized okay. as. Okay, I'm giving um, you my opinion of what I see, my perception sure. of what's happening in the, in those. Sure, I, I think meetings. it's I think it's I mean no surprise that anyone paying attention. Yeah, throughout the country, like there are things coming through that a lot of people aren't comfortable with. Um, and, you know, New York State certainly is not an unbiased player in that. Um, so, as things come to us as elected representatives, you know, you, know, you don't leave our ethics or anything out, like, out the door. No. Like, well informed to make good decisions on behalf of the people we serve. Everyone. But it's how you have those discussions. Well, I would say yeah. that is the key to this sure. entire. Right, and I, and I think you know in politics when you're talking difference of opinions, like to have some sort of uh, this isn't really politics. Um, difference of opinion that we come to a consensus on things when when there is a difference of opinions to have, uh, I guess, a thick enough skin and good enough communication, especially when there are items that are controversial to, to have adult conversations about those, um, try to understand the position of, of one another uh, rather than, okay, well, this 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 is, you know, a policy that, that I'm okay with, so let's just push it through, right? And if, if the policy reflects what you believe in, all is good. When it doesn't and you have issues with something, like if someone gets offended over that, like, I mean, I, I have no control. If so, I certainly do not seek to offend in any sort of way. I seek to have honest dialogue. Um, and yeah, like policies are coming to have very interesting issues, <laughs> uh, culture shifting issues. And I think those should be talked about and discussed. Um, and I'd love an opportunity to be able to do that. Um, Rick, you had you wanted to start that? Yes, I'd like to make a motion uh, to appoint three appoint Jason. I don't believe there'll be another issue, but if there is, they can be removed again. And that, that would be my answer. So I make a motion. 
All right, then you need a second. Okay, it's going to be seconded. Further discussion. Yeah. My, my, again, my piece is, is that no matter what the outcome is, you have to understand it's that just think about board dynamics and the way things are running. And, you know, if any if decision either way is going to affect that, that harmony that we try to establish here, um, you know, keep that in, in mind. And I know that I, I will say this, I, we had a really good discussion um, with Jason between John and Superintendent and I, and I believe you had a, a very good discussion at that point too. Um, so you know, be with it as it, as it may. Um, you know, it's up to you now to, as a board, to determine then that green statement. So all those in favor then of reappointing, uh, reinstating Jason to the policy committee, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Abstaining? <clears throat> and I'm abstaining because of my, the way my role is, I had already stated my opinion at that piece. So Mike, did you? All right, then motion fails. Four, two, one. Two, two, four, one. Sorry. All right. Um, any other old business this time? All right, new business. We have the item for the school security officers. I like to make a motion that based on the recommendation from the superintendent of schools, the board accepts the proposal from Vista Security Group for school security services. And furthermore, the board agrees to enter into a service contract with Vista Security Group for school security services for the 2022-2023 school year. Is there a second to that? Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion of that item? Any initial discussion? All, right, all those in favor accepting that motion, please say aye. Aye. Opposed or abstaining? Motion carries. I like to also make a motion that based on the recommendation from the superintendent of schools, the board permits the superintendent to enter into a service contract with Security Solutions of Niagara for additional school security services. Is there a second to that? I'll second. Seconded. Any for discussion? All those in favor then, please say aye. 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 Opposed or abstaining? Motion carries. Right, any other new business this time? All right, um, public comments? Dave? Yeah. Okay. Uh, board member comments? Yeah, for those who don't know, we have a 20 year employee, Dave Collins, who's uh, the new president of the SRP. What is open mic night? So if you want to. <laughs> all right. Um, all right. If, other than that, then I'd like to call for a motion to adjourn. I'll, make motion. I'll second it. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, are abstaining. Motion carries. We're adjourned.